In this video, we'll continue to learn the Blackshaw option pricing model, and uh, we'll learn a Brownian motion called a geometric Brownian motion. Let's first recall um, our standard Brownian motion um, when taking a snapshot. Uh, we can see this is normally distributed with mean zero and variance t. And of course we can define y of t, and this is we call it Brownian motion with a drift. This is mu t plus sigma times wt mu, and sigma are deterministic non uh, constants. Um, and we can easily verify that y of t is, uh, when we take a snapshot at t, this is a random variable, normally distributed with mean mu t and uh, uh, variance sigma square times t. So next is we define something called geometric Brownian motion, which mimics the definition of a uh, geometric like a growth. Okay, um, and we let x of t equals e to the y t to the power, and y t is this uh, um, Brownian motion with a drift right here. Here we'll use this one to model uh, the stock prices, okay, and we hope it is a martingale. So there is a caveat. Uh, by the way, uh, this is not a martingale, but uh, we'll try to construct a martingale uh, based on this uh, geometric Brownian motion. And before we do that, okay, because of this is uh, exponential uh, raised to some normal random variable, uh, we got a review. So here we'll do a review of uh, something we learned in 130b. That is a moment generating function. So let's recall. Um, by the way, uh, in 130b, um, the moment generating function uses t as a variable, uh, but it causes it kind of causes confusion because uh, a t is our time here. Uh, so here I'll use a uh, different variable. So I'll use a uh, Greek letter c and uh, x is some uh, a random variable, continuous or discrete, it doesn't matter. Um, and then our moment generating function phi of C is defined by the expected value of exponential of C times this x. So C is some uh, um, like a real number. And now let's uh, try to compute first. Let's try to compute uh, the moment generating function for the standard normal random variable. Okay. If we have z, which is our standard normal random variable, and our phi of z of c can be then computed by, uh, which is the expected value of uh, of this guy. So it is. Uh, uh, integration from minus infinity to infinity e to the uh, c little x and this f of x is a pdf of the uh, original z and this is nothing but uh, a little bit modified integration of a function so uh, it's 1 over square root of 2 pi and e to the c times x's power and this is a uh, um, e to the negative x squared divided by 2 uh, dx. Okay, and now we're going to complete the square on top. So what happens is this is the same thing as um, if we complete the square, we'll get something like x subtract c squared divided by 2 and then uh, plus 
because c square divided by 2. Because uh, um, as we can see, this uh, linear term right here is a cross term in uh, this uh, square term. And uh, the only uncountable term here is a minus of c squared divided by 2. So we plus it back. And, uh, um, and now we simply use uh, change of variables. So we let, uh, we let uh, uh, y equals x subtract c. Then, because c is a real number, so it doesn't change uh, the upper and lower limit of this integral. And we'll have the same thing. That is uh, um, negative infinity to infinity, and this is a uh, negative y squared divided by two uh, times uh, c squared divided by two. But now x, so y is x minus c, so dy equals dx. C is like a constant with the respect to this integral, and we have this. And now, if we check. Um, certain parts of the integral, it's uh, this factor, and we have our e to the negative y squared divided by 2, and this is dy. So they integrate up to 1, and we get our moment generating function for standard normal random variable. As a result, um, we can have, um, for a general, if what happens if a random variable is uh, um, say uh, mu plus sigma z. So apparently, um, if we plus a mu and multiply with a sigma, standard normal random variable, this gives us uh, a normally distributed random variable with mean mu and uh, variance sigma square. Um, so now let's try to compute the moment generating function for this x. So this is our uh, uh, expected value of e to c, and we plug in what's x, it's uh, mu plus sigma z, all right? If we look at this, first of all, to c times mu is deterministic. So we raise it as an exponent of the exponential function, it's still deterministic, so we can pull it out. And the rest is just expectation of c sigma z, all right? If we look at this expression, uh, it's c sigma. It is as if we replace the c here by c times sigma, okay? Then everything will carry over and uh, we have obtained our expression, which is a uh, casimu times. We just use the result from the first one. We replace casi with casi sigma, so we have this is casi sigma squared divided by two. Um, and we have obtained our uh, moment generating function for general. Uh, Normally distributed random variable, it's uh, it's essentially this. Okay. Now, um, let's uh, continue. And uh, um, to investigate whether the geometric Brownian motion is a uh, martingale. Okay, and uh, first of all, the answer is no, but uh, we can do some trick uh, to convert it to a martingale. And we're interested in uh, the following limit. That is, uh, so first of all, x of t is a geometric Brownian motion. Okay, and we are interested in the following conditional distribution. First of all, first of all, um, 
there is a one-to-one -one correspondence with uh, yt and uh, uh, xt. Okay, uh, for each like yt, so uh, we'll get a unique uh, value of uh, xt. It's not like uh, this exponential function is a quadratic function. This exponential function, if we sketch its figure, it's something like this. Okay, um, for each yt here, uh, we'll get a unique value of xt, which means given the information of uh, x of u, for u is from 0 to s, it is as if the information is given as uh, y of u. So uh, let's try to rewrite something like this. This is e, e to the y to the power, and the condition given, it's the same as y of u. Here we follow the same trick of what we have used before. That is, uh, um, we split the y of t as y of s plus the increment. Now we can pull out this uh, e of uh, y of s, then we multiply um, this guy, given y of u. And because the information up to s is given, this value um, is not random anymore because it's given. Okay, so we can pull it out from the expected value. This is, uh, we can pull it out from the expected value. Here, we gotta use uh, independent increment again. Because uh, those two times are non-overlapping, uh, as a result, this is uh, um, as if we are computing the uh, um, unconditional this expectation. Now here is where we use our moment generating function. Um, Keep this in mind. Um, we have this y of t subtract y of s. This is the same thing as um, we have a drifted Brownian motion. This is mu times uh, t minus s subtract sigma w t minus w s. Uh, as a result, this is a normally distributed random variable with mean mu times t minus s, and uh, um, the variance of this guy is uh, t minus s, and we have a sigma factor here. So we have a sigma square times t minus s. Okay, and this is this is this. This one here was like our original mu in our um, derivation, and this is like our original sigma square. As a result, we can simply let c equals 1 in our original um, moment generating function, and we'll obtain uh, something like we copy down e to the y of s's power, and then uh, by moment generating function with like x equals 1, we'll have this is exponential raised to the mu t minus, uh, minus s power plus uh, plus this guy because c is uh, c is now 1. So um, if 
we uh, look back right here, uh, as if we let uh, cos c uh, equals 1, as sigma squared is our variance, as a result, um, this term right here above is our variance. Okay, And now we have this formula. Um, and apparently this is not uh, this is not uh, e to the yth power, okay. But uh, let's uh, let's try to rewrite, uh, copy down the formula. What we have derived is uh, Is that's the expectation? First of all, it's not a martingale. It's not a martingale in the sense that this is not uh, e to the y of s's power. It is instead it is uh, e to the y s's power multiplied with this factor. Okay. Um, let me move this a little bit. So instead, it's uh, multiply with this factor. But however, we can rearrange this factor by the following thing. We can think this is a mu t plus sigma square t. Okay, we combine all the t terms and then we subtract all the s terms. This is mu s plus sigma squared divided by 2 s. Okay. And now we see that this is like s term, this is like t term, and they are separable. And we combine the t term with t term and uh, uh, um, s term with s term. We'll have something like uh, so we move. Uh, this term to the left, so we'll get this is e to the minus, so we pull out t, this is mu plus sigma square uh, divided by 2 t, exponential of e to the y of t to power, given this y of u, u is between 0 and s, this equals e to the y s's power, and multiply e to the minus, we pull out um, s, we have something like that. Now we have to acknowledge the fact that this is deterministic. There is no random term in this term. And we let mu plus sigma squared divided by 2 equals alpha. If we do this, we'll have, and we move this term inside, the expectation. This is e to the minus alpha t times oops, e to the y t power and uh, given y of u from this is the same thing as e to the negative alpha s's power e to the y of s's power. Now we rewrite everything back in x, we'll find this is e to the negative alpha t power. Um, by the way, this is nothing but x of t. And like I said earlier, uh, x and y, they have a one-to-one -one correspondence. Given the condition of y of u is the same as given condition of x of u between uh, 0 to s. And this is e to the minus alpha s times x of s. So as a result, first of all, x models our stock price. Okay, And uh, we have concluded that when we consider the normalized stock price, this is a martingale. And in the next video, we'll learn the uh, Black Show option pricing model based on 
this uh, martingale.